here yet again and this time I want to show you a Photoshop tutorial where we talk about compositing and blending images together. Now if we take the image in front of us here we've got a picture of Danny our model on quite a grungy kind of background which fits in with his clothing and the lighting in this picture but it actually started off like this. The photograph was taken in a studio on a white background and obviously we've got the grey background there because of the way that we've positioned the light onto Danny. So what I want to do is I want to show you how we can take a picture like this and take it like this in a matter of minutes, very, very quickly. Okay, so if we jump over to Photoshop, here we have the image that came out of camera of Danny, with, which, who was lit with just the one light, and we've got this graduated grey background. So what I want to do is I want to add that grungy background to him. That could initially be quite a tricky thing to do, particularly as Danny's got quite spiky hair at the top here, and selecting that could be difficult. Obviously, for those of you who are using Photoshop CS5, we now have the new and enhanced Refine Edge uh, facility, which is absolutely cracking. And yeah, it could well do a good job in this instance, but I want to show you a technique that I use probably 90% of the time now when I'm doing composites. And it's really, really quick. And it actually means we make use of blend modes. So here we go. This is all we're going to do. Here we have the picture of Danny. And the first thing I'm going to do is choose a background that I want to use to put onto the, uh, onto the picture as well. So we'll just uh, browse one of those. I'm going to place it into this image as a smart object. And I'm going to choose one here. I have a folder on my computer where I have a, generally I'll regularly photograph textured backgrounds for future use, as in this kind of case. So here we have a texture, and we're going to place that onto our image here. I'm now going to hold down my Alter Option key and Shift and just drag it so that it fills the whole of that picture there and press enter to commit it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my layers panel here and I'm going to turn that layer off and click just the once on the layer containing Danny. And we'll just zoom out and there we go, whoops, zoom out to about there, there we go. Okay, right, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to make a selection of Danny and I'm going to press W on my keyboard or I'm going to come over to the tools panel over here, the tools bar, and just use the quick selection tool. And all I'm going to do then is just make a very, very rough selection using the quick selection tool of Danny. Now, appreciate there's all the hair here, which we mentioned earlier. I'm not overly concerned about that at the moment because the mask you'll see doesn't have to be perfect. So all I'm doing is just going over Danny, making a Photoshop so he selects all of Danny's upper body and his legs and his arms and so on. We'll just wait for that to process there. And we'll just move up and we'll come down his body here, selecting his legs. And obviously we've selected just a little bit more than we wanted. So all I'm going to do now to, to deselect this area just in between Danny's arm and his body, I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and then just drag in this area as well so that it deselects that, so that's not included. Okay, and we'll do the same for the other side as well. Hold down our Alter Option key and just click in this area here. So it's not selected, a little bit down here. And I can see there's just one more area that we need to do just down here between Danny's legs. And we'll just click in there as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got Danny's, Danny selected. In fact, we'll just come up to his ear. And just select just a little bit of that ear. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect and you'll see in a moment what I mean. So there we go, that's the selection made. Then we're going to come back over to our layers panel. We're going to click here to activate the grunge sort of textured layer and then select it so it goes blue. So now we're working on that layer. Coming back to our main picture, we can see we can see the marching ants, the selection of Danny is here. All I'm going to do then is create a mask. Having the grunge layer active, I'm going to click on the new layer mask down there. And we get this, like so, almost like something out of the Predator film there, actually. And then with that layer selected, I'm then going to invert it. So we're now going to go to Select, so we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. Now here we can see the background has come through. And yeah, we've got a lot of Danny showing through, but it's far from perfect. Because when we look here, it's very, very obvious it's been cut out, very jagged edges here. Again, that could be quite tricky to sort of solve that unless we're using CS5. But what we can do now, this is what's amazing about these blend modes within Photoshop is, change the blend mode of this grunge layer with the mask on to soft light. And look what happens when we do that. Straight away we can see 
that that selection has just been sorted out with just a click of one button. We can see the hair at the top here on Danny. All has now been selected really, really nicely. I'll zoom in and I'll show that. Let's just change the blend mode to normal. And we can see the really jaggedy hair. In fact, there's no hair goes beyond this point here. Pretty obvious that it's been cut out there. But when we change the blend mode to soft light, you can see now, hopefully you'll see this on your screen, that all of the hair, all these little fine strands of hair are selected. And what's amazing about this technique is, even when it comes down to things like the hair on Danny's arms, hopefully you can see this. If we follow the line of his arm here, we can see all those fine hair uh, strands on his arms as well, which have been selected. Now what we can see, we've done that, there's just maybe one or two areas that need uh, refining. We can see just a little bit of that, little bit of that uh, original background showing through here from the studio. So as we're on a mask, all I need to do now is get a brush by pressing B on my keyboard and painting with white, making sure that my foreground colour is set to white in the tools, panel, uh, tools bar over here. And using my left bracket key, I'm going to go nice and small with the brush and I'm just going to paint through just to bring through the grungy textured layer beneath Danny. And just a little bit on his hand here. And there we go. So it's as quick as that. Really, really quick. I love this technique. Sure, Photoshop CS5 can do this quite nicely as well. But I think when it comes to something like this, when the strands of hair are really disappearing into this black background, even Photoshop CS5 might struggle with it on the new Refine Edge. But using blend modes, does it a treat. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. <laughs>